In Luke 15. Okay, go to Luke 15. Now, I, I have it marked here, so easy to turn for me. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God for the markers. Praise God. Luke 15. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Y'all ready to learn some? We're we going to learn a lot in one hour. Lord, y'all pray for me. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. The title of this message, amen, amen, is um, The Value Within. The Value Within. Okay? The value within. Amen. Lord Jesus, mighty God, I thank you for your word. I thank you for what you're going to do, mighty God, Lord Jesus. Mighty God, your word is already anointed, O oh Lord. Lord Jesus, mighty God, I come to you as a living sacrifice. Mighty Hallelujah. Consume it with your fire, Lord Jesus. Let your will be done in and through me, Almighty oh God. For your people, mighty God, and for your will, Lord Jesus, and for your glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated in the name of the Lord Jesus. The value from within. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you know that you are valuable to God? Amen. Hallelujah. You are, you are valuable to God. Amen. And you are valuable. Amen. See, he, he made you in his image. Praise God. And because he made you in his image. Amen. There's, that's a value right there. You're valuable. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Now, as the, after the fall, Pastor preached it this morning. After the fall, amen, the fall of man, we were what? We were tainted. Amen. We were marred. Hallelujah. Amen. And praise God. And God had to save us. Amen. With an outstretched arm. Praise God. Hallelujah. There was value to you when he did that. There's a value in that outstretched arm, that stretched out arm that God saved us with. Amen. There's value to that. Praise God. Amen. So there's value and he saved us. Amen. Hallelujah. Baptized in his name. You, amen. Filled with the spirit. Hallelujah. So you are valuable, but you're also value. You have a value inside of you. So you're valuable, but you have, you contain something that's valuable. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're double valued in a sense. Praise God. Hallelujah. There's a lot going on. Hallelujah. As a believer, praise God, but you are valuable. Amen. Hallelujah. So I'm going to share some scriptures. Amen. I'm going to, hallelujah. I'm going to take out my phone. Hallelujah. Real quick so I don't have to turn back and forth. Amen. But there's a value. So if we go to, if I go to, um, praise God. Go to some scriptures here. Amen. First Peter 2.9. First Peter 2.9. If you have it, say amen. It says, but ye are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, amen, yes. hallelujah, yes. that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You are valuable. You are peculiar. You're a peculiar priesthood, amen. You're a peculiar people, amen. Let's go to Exodus 19. Exodus 19, verse 5. Amen. Amen. Now, therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if you obey his voice, keep his covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me, unto him, above all people. Praise God. So you are peculiar. You are a treasure unto God. You are valuable. Hallelujah. Amen. And so, amen. With that being said, we're going to go to Luke 15. Amen. Hallelujah. See, he, or he God, hallelujah, sees you as valuable. Amen. When you go to verse 15, it says, they drew near unto him, all the publicans and sinners. Publicans are your tax collectors. Amen. And therefore you have your sinners for to hear him. They came to hear him. They drew near unto him. Amen. Hallelujah. And the Pharisees and the scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. So you have the Pharisees, the scribes murmuring, complaining, the religious folk. The sons of Satan, if you will. Praise God. Pastor preached it this morning. He said, Amen. Jesus called them, You are their father, the devil. In his works you shall do. Amen. So the enemy comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. 
That's what he does. Amen. To kill, to steal, and to destroy. Because when he sees you and he sees me, amen, he sees anything that's value, that's up to God, it's not valuable. It's not valuable. Amen. Not valuable at all. Hallelujah. Praise God. So verse 4, it says, What man of you having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth he not leave the ninety-nine, the ninety and nine, in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost until he find it? And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he come home, he called together his friends, his neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I found my sheep which was lost. Amen. Hallelujah. So this sheep was valuable to God. This sheep, amen, speaks of you and I. Speaks of, amen, hallelujah, uh, before we became, amen, hallelujah, into his kingdom. Before we became saved, we were that sheep. Hallelujah, the sheep that was crying out to God. A sheep that was in need of God. Hallelujah. See, God's attracted to need. He's attracted, hallelujah, to chaos, if you will. You understand what I'm telling you? Hallelujah, because he's a God of order. It's out of order to be in not in right relationship with God on this earth. It's out of order. Hallelujah. So when he came to this earth, if you go to Genesis 1-1, he came to this earth, it was darkness, void. Hallelujah. What did he do? He brought order by his spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. He brought order. Let there be light. Let there be this. Amen. He brought into creation. And he brought order. He brought man to keep. Amen. The garden of God. So he is attracted to need. He is attracted to order. Why is that? Because he can't have anything out of order. And when he has a saint, when he has somebody, amen, out there that's reaching out to him, that's crying out to him, hallelujah, that's desperate for him, hallelujah, he's going to come fill the void, amen. Hallelujah, he's going to come fill it. He has to because that's God's nature, hallelujah. He shows his arm, the value of his arm, and he shows as he reaches the sheep, amen, he goes after him. He's showing a contrast here. But he says, you 99, you're like the you're Pharisees, you're like this 99 sheep. He goes, I'd rather go out there, amen, and save that which is lost than you 99 who think you won't need me. Because they don't think they see a need in Jesus, amen. When you keep reaching him, he says in verse 7, I say unto you, likewise, joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, amen. So there's repentance here. Then repenteth, amen, more than over 90 and 9 just persons which need no repentance. Hallelujah. So these Pharisees, these hallelujah, Sadducees, these scribes, they did not see the value of these sinners. He didn't see the value. They didn't have God's heart. They didn't have his heart. They didn't have his spirit. They didn't have his will, his mind, his emotions. They were not aligned with God, and therefore they didn't see the value of the sinner. They didn't see the purpose. Why they were, why they were called a nation. Hallelujah. Amen. To reach the lost, to be a light unto the world. They didn't see it. They didn't see the value of what Jesus was doing here. Amen. They didn't see his need. Amen. They didn't see their need for him. Amen. Hallelujah. So, praise God. I'm going to show you. I'm going to teach you some math. Amen. We're talking about value. Amen. Value. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to start off with amen. And I'm going to come back to these if possible. Hallelujah. You got the X and Y axis. Have you all seen this before in math? X and Y axis. What does that shape look to you? Like a cross, amen? Like a cross. Do you see the center right there? Do you know that center right there? That, do you see the, what's the number of that center? Zero. The mystery of zero. Now, I didn't get this out of a book, okay? Amen? Because you don't find these in books. Hallelujah. The mystery of zero. You know, zero, amen? Hallelujah. When you see the x-axis going to the left and going to the right, okay? I'm going to teach you something. All right? I, I just got, I just got a, 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 an X and Y axis that's measured in 10 to the left, 10 to the right, 10 up, 10 down. But it doesn't stop at 10. It goes to infinite. Infinite to the left, infinite to the right, infinite up, infinite down. Amen. Hallelujah. It talks to you about the salvation of the Lord, how powerful that is. Amen. How far it reaches. Amen. And you know, hallelujah, we've been taught that the cross is in Golgotha. Amen. It's the center of the earth. Hallelujah. There's a lot about the zero, the power and the mystery of zero. And zero, when you're at zero, there's the balance. There's the balance. God resides. See, when people look at zero, they think it's nothingness. But see, amen, hallelujah. But what does God say? I fill the void. Amen, hallelujah. So he's there at the zero, if you will. Hallelujah, amen. Praise God. I'll just keep on going. When he's at the cross, amen, when he spreads 
his, his hands, amen. He has his head. He has his feet, amen. Yes. When you see the cross right there, yes. you can see his stretched out arms yes. along that x-axis. Amen. His heart is right there at the center. Right there. At the center. Amen. Hallelujah. See, that's why they didn't see, hallelujah, the, the value of the lost sinner. Because they didn't have his heart at the center. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. And I'm going to come back to that. Amen. Let's go to the next scriptures. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to go to the next scriptures. Hallelujah. So now we got in verse 8, it says, Either that woman having ten pieces of silver. So we're talking about the lost coin. This is very powerful. Okay. Either that woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, does not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it. And when she found it, she called her friends and her neighbors together saying, Rejoice with me. For I have found the peace which I lost. Amen. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. Praise the Lord. Now, as I was studying this, you have the woman. Amen. The woman in the Bible speaks of the soul. Hallelujah. Here's the soul. Hallelujah. Searching. It's me and 10 pieces of silver. When you talk about the number 10, amen, hallelujah, there's a number 10 means in a sense completion. There's a wholeness there, amen. There's the 10th, hallelujah. And I got the Hebrew letters here for 10. Amen. amen. It's very powerful in this scripture. I don't know if you can see it. There's the Hebrew letters for number 10. Okay. So 10, hallelujah, brings back into harmony, brings back order. You talk about the number 10, you're talking about order. Now, I believe it if I'm correctly understanding, I can't remember, amen, hallelujah. But I believe what it is, amen. There's something about the order of God in number 10, all right. And I'm going to read you the letter. So this letter right here, now you have to read it backwards. It looks like the letter Y, but it's not, amen. Okay, it's called Ayin. It symbolically means to see, I, discern, or divine providence, Okay. Then you got that. looks like a tree. You see it looks like a tree in the middle. Amen. It's called sheen. Symbolic means the tree of life, burning bush, God's spirit. Amen. Then you have the third character. It's called, third character. It's called the resh. Symbolic means a humble or penitent man or repentant man. Like he is bending over in prayer. Amen. That's the number 10. Okay. All right. See that? Okay. So let me do that again. The, 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 the right here, read it backwards, right? That means what? Ayin, to discern. Amen. The middle, the sheen, it's like a tree, a burning bush, God's spirit. It's fire. Amen. And then the third character is Rosh, amen. A character that's bent over, it looks like it's, it's praying. A person praying, amen. Hallelujah. It represents a repentant man in prayer, a repentant person in prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. It represents the number 10 in letters. So there's an order in here. There's a divine order. That's it, Pastor. Thank you. There's a divine order. That's what the number 10 means. Divine order. So you have a soul here. Hallelujah. A person. Hallelujah. He got the nine coins. Now, when you count the nine coins, hallelujah, they're not going to, when you count it, it's gonna, they're going to say, I'm missing a coin. But when they're missing the coin, they're not going to say, I'm missing the first coin. No, they're saying, I'm missing the 10th coin. Right? So there's an order here. There's a, there's a value here. And so there, there's no wholeness here. There's no divine order. Amen here. I got to go find that 10th coin. Hallelujah. Amen. So what, did, so what did this woman do? Hallelujah. She what? She, she light a candle. She light a candle. Amen. She had to, amen. She got to light a candle. Amen. And she had to look for it. Had to have the light of God. Amen. It represents the fire of God. Getting back that fire. Amen. Getting back the, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Until she find it. And when she found it, amen, she's sweeping. She's cleaning. She's bringing order. She's repenting in a sense. The soul is trying to find God. Hallelujah. Amen. It goes through these four letters, that tenth coin. I'm trying to get my fire back. I'm trying to get my order back in my life. I'm trying. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's what she's doing. And so she's repenting to find that tenth coin. And she found the tenth coin once she found the tenth coin. 
Hallelujah. Rejoicing. See, when you get saved, you rejoice. When you know your need and God feels the need, you rejoice. Not only you rejoice, but the angels in heaven rejoice. The angels in heaven rejoice. Hallelujah, church. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Now I'm going to get back. Amen. Praise the Lord to that, to that X and Y axis. Amen. Now we're going to talk about, amen, the next one. Amen. The lost son. Praise God. It says, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that followed to me. And he divided them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. Say far country. There's going to be a lot in this church. Get ready, okay? Praise God. Hallelujah. God's good. Amen. Far country. When we speak of the word far, it's distance. Okay? In mathematics, there's a, there's a symbol. There's a thing called absolute value. In physics, they use it. Anything that's in math related, they use it. It speaks of distance. Okay? Amen. The absolute value. Okay, so distance can't be, po- it has, can't be negative, if you will. It has to be positive, okay? So they have what you call the absolute value, a far country, a distance, okay? So this young man, amen, he went and he spent all. He wasted his substance with riotous living, amen. He spent all, amen, he went to a land and famine rose. Praise God. And when famine rose up, amen, what happened? He's wasted all his money. Famine rose. He has nothing to eat. He is in need. He is in need. Okay? I'm going to turn back around here. He is in need. Why is he in need? For first and foremost, when he was at his father's house, he didn't see the value. He didn't see the value of, of serving his father. He didn't see the value of consecrating to his father. He didn't see the value of staying under the house, being near to his father. He didn't see the value, church. Hallelujah. You have the older brother, and man, he sees the value. He's still there. But this younger man didn't see the value. Hallelujah. So what did he do? Before he manifestly distanced himself from his family, before he manifestly distanced himself from his father, he distanced himself in the heart. In the heart, he distanced himself. Hallelujah. Somehow, some way, it doesn't just happen. He distanced himself in the heart, little by little. Amen. Little by little. Hallelujah. His heart's not with the Father. His heart's not with the consecration. His heart consecration means being near to the Father. How said being near to him. Hallelujah. What will you have me to do, Father? What's your will, Father? What do you want? How do you want me to serve you, Father? Then have the heart. So he was distanced in heart. He didn't see the value of being in that home. He didn't see the value. Hallelujah of consecration. Just like some Christians, amen. They come in the church, amen. They don't see the value of prayer. They don't see the value of giving themselves to God. They don't see the value of reading the word. They don't see the value, church. And they manifest little by little, amen. Do they distance themselves from God? Hallelujah. The Father, amen, here is speaking of God, but it's also speaking of a human father as well. He is provided, he got everything he needs there. Hallelujah. He lacks nothing. He didn't see the value. Didn't see the value. Amen. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land. So he went out to the amen, far land. Hallelujah. And a famine, amen, rose up. Hallelujah. Now he has a need. Hallelujah. The land is barren. There's no covering. There's no house. There's nothing to cover him. Hallelujah. No food. He wasted on harlots. Hallelujah. And when you talk about a harlot, man, hallelujah, the harlot has smooth words. And we'll get to that in a minute because i got to bring math back into it. Okay? Hallelujah. Amen. Smooth words. He went out and spent it with, to the harlots. He gave his life to the harlots. When you speak of harlots in the Bible, it's talking about not just a woman, but so you gotta, you got to see it in the spirit. It's talking about the false doctrine. It's talking about the honeycomb that's sweeter than honey. They think it is and they fall for it. The, 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 the smooth talk of the harlots. Hallelujah. Wasted the money of the harlot. Took his heart, church. Amen. Hallelujah. And what happened? Hallelujah. He went this far country. He went, amen, amen. He joined himself to a citizen. He had to go find some covering, but he was out of place. 
And that citizen said, hey, hey, you're going to go over here. And you're going to serve me, but you're going to serve feeding them hogs, them unclean animals. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what happens when you leave the covering. Hallelujah. That's what happens when you leave the covering of God. We'll see nothing value. All you're going to be serving is hogs. All you're going to be serving is hogs. And what do hogs do? They trample underfoot anything that's valuable. Hallelujah. They'll, you can bring God in it, but they'll trample on it. That's what's not good. Hallelujah. When you leave God that way, you'll see the value of what you have. Amen. Hallelujah. But it starts in the heart. So what happened? He saw his need. He said, what am I doing here? Amen. Hallelujah. My father's house, they have servants. And they have bread, man. They're fed well. I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to go back and I'm going to repent. Hallelujah. He says, I'm going to tell my father. He said in his heart, I'm going to repent. I'm going to say, Father, hallelujah, I'm going to repent. Father, I'm not worthy to be your son. Just hire me as a servant. Hallelujah. And give me the servant's wages because they're better treated better than out here. Hallelujah. And so he did that. He went back home. Hallelujah. He went back home. Amen. Because he knew his need, church. Amen. Hallelujah. And what happened? The father was waiting. See, the father didn't come chase after him. Hallelujah. Now, now, amen, the father, I'm talking physically. The father didn't come chase after him. But if you look at the two other scriptures, God chase after them. You understand? God will chase after them. Because all souls belong to God. Hallelujah. That's how much he loves. Hallelujah. He'll chase after you. He'll chase after you. Just like he did Jonah. He'll chase after him. Where are you going, boy? Hallelujah. That's the way I see God when he chases after you. <laughs> Amen. That's what he'll do. But this father, no, he has to wait on God. He has to trust in God, if you will. Amen. So he's waiting. But then, but this is also God at the same time, man. I'm telling you. This is God all around. Hallelujah. Amen. Because why? Because God sees the value that's within you. He'll go and stretch out his arm to still save you. He continually saves me. Hallelujah. Amen. But he'll let you go to a pig pen. Hallelujah. And he's there with you all the time. But you don't even know it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He'll be with you in that pig. He'll see you in that pig. When he's there. He's waiting. Are you going to repent? Hallelujah. I can't be there physically. The father, physical father can't be there physically. But God can. Because God, he says, I'll never leave you nor forsake. He's faithful. Human beings are not faithful. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, so when the father saw him, though, he didn't, the father saw him at a distance. He saw him at a distance. There was a value of that son to the father. He saw him at a distance and he ran. Hallelujah. He ran to the son. He didn't wait for the son to come to the front. He ran. Because he discerned, hallelujah, that he's repenting. He wouldn't come back. You could see him. No clothes, no shoes, nothing. Beat up the earth, tear him up. The world system, tear him up. Hallelujah. Tear him up. But that's where he had to go to repent. Hallelujah. Amen. And he told his father, said, Father, just, I'm sorry I repent. Hallelujah for what I've done to you. I'm not worthy to be called your son. Hallelujah. Just hire me as one of your servants. Hallelujah. And I'll work for bread. Hallelujah. And his father says, no. Hallelujah. He didn't even, he didn't even acknowledge that. He says, get the best robe. Get the ring. Hallelujah. Put it on my son. For he was lost and now he's found. Hallelujah. Amen. And they made a big feast. Amen. Praise God. And it says, but the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe. Put it on him. Put a ring on his hand. Shoes on his feet. Hallelujah. Bring hither the fatted calf. Oh, they're going to have a party. And kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this is my son that was dead. See, he's dead. Why is he dead? Because when a father mourns for a son, it's like he's dead. He's hurt. Hallelujah. He's mourning. He's in grief. Amen. Hallelujah. Because you see him as dead because I don't see him anymore. Hallelujah. But he sees his son. He repented. See, we got hope. Amen. Hallelujah. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found again. They begin to marry. Amen. And they, man, they had a party. Praise God. That's how valuable God sees you. That's how valuable God sees us. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, what gets us there? 
Again, he didn't see the importance and the value that's inside of him. But he was valuable to God. He was valuable to the Father. He put a robe and shoes on him. That's how valuable he was. Amen. But he didn't realize, amen, hallelujah, the value that he had. I'm going to turn, amen, and I'm going to show you the cry, amen, the cry of what happens when we don't see the value, hallelujah, of God and what you, ha what you have in him, amen. Now these Pharisees, these scribes, yes, they didn't see the value and God's trying to show them. You don't see the value the what I see, okay. You don't see the value. And I'm going to get back to the math here in a minute because this is powerful. But I'm going to go to Proverbs verse five, chapter 5. And I'm going to read this to you. And I'm almost done. I'm almost done, church. I'm almost done. It's called the lips of a strange woman. Now, when you're talking about a strange woman, I don't want you to just get your mind of just a woman. Yeah, it means physically, right? Pastor taught us so much. He taught us a lot here about about the strange woman. It could be false doctrine. It's voices, amen, that will draw us away from God, amen. The strange woman. He says, "My son, attend, attend unto my wisdom, and bow thy ear to my to my understanding, that thou mayest regard discretion, and that thy lips may keep knowledge, amen. For the lips of a strange woman." Drop as a honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil. Smoother than oil. Deceptive, amen. The voice of the strange woman. The voice, amen, that tries to call you out from God. The voice, amen, that tries to pull us out from away from God. It's strange, amen. And it's smoother than a honeycomb is what it says here. Hallelujah. But her end is bitter as wormwood and sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to the death. Her steps take hold on hell. When you see, amen, I'm going to tell you, amen, when a person takes these words of the strange woman, they added something to them. There's an addition here in mathematics. They add something to them that's not of God. Amen. See, I can be distracted. See, a lot, I think the problem that we have in America and all throughout, I really believe this, is distractions. Distractions. Hallelujah. Amen. Distractions. Hallelujah. And, and what do you call it? I, I don't even know the term right now. Amen. But your distractions in, in what? Video games. I'm just going to start there. Uh, amen. Distractions. Hallelujah. In movies. Distractions. Entertainment is what I'm trying to say. Hallelujah. Distractions in that. Now, there's nothing wrong with watching. Amen. Hallelujah. TV. I'm not saying that. But what's your priority? What's my priority? Amen. Hallelujah. What's my priority? Amen. I had an uncle, and I'm, I'm going, I'm, I got a lot here to say, and I'm going to be, I'm, I promise I'll be done. Hallelujah. I have an uncle. Amen. Was teaching me when I was a young age how he was a successful businessman. He was a successful seller. He's a consultant, whatever. Okay. But he needs God. Amen. But he was trying to teach me the order of your priority list. And the last thing he had, the, the, well, the, one of the things that he had was himself. He says, you got to take care of number one, son. you got to take care of yourself. His priority was not right. Okay? Amen. And then you go and have fun. You go, you know, what's, let's say I play golf, so I'm going to do golf. That's next in my priority list. Because i got to take care of myself, number one. And number two, I've got to entertain myself. Hallelujah. Amen. Because I want to be joy. I want to be happy. Amen. Then number three is God. And number four is your family. Now, thank the Lord. I wasn't stupid. I wasn't in the, in the church yet. But I wasn't stupid enough to believe that. I said, no way, Jose. I didn't say that to him. I didn't want to disrespect him because I didn't have the Spirit of God at that time. Hallelujah. But if I was to talk to today, I'd say, no way, Jose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No, it should be God. Number one, family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And after that, it doesn't really matter. Hallelujah. And, and in me at the end, I guess, because I'm a father at the end. Hallelujah. Because I, like Pastor said, I should, I should be a sacrifice to my family. It's not about me. I'm not number one. Amen. Hallelujah. I give myself as a living sacrifice. Because I don't have to worry about my value. 
Because Jesus Christ has already put the value in me. He will cover me. I don't have to worry about me. I want to focus on him. I want to focus on his will. That's the priority, church. But there's distractions out there. Amen. There's distractions out there that will lead us and that will take us away. That will take us away from God's will. Distractions. Amen. Social media is the biggest one. Hallelujah. I'm not trying to take away your Hulu. Not trying to take away your Netflix. I'm not saying that. What's your priority? That's all I'm saying. I, I love that. I like to watch movies. I'm, I ain't going to take them. Amen. Let's pastor say we're going to take them. Okay. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. But I'm, but I'm trying to make a point here. So what I'm saying is what's your priority? So if I'm sitting down watching Netflix or Hulu and God says, I need you to get up and pray, then what's my priority? Okay, Lord. I'm going to get up and pray. You understand? Hallelujah. You know, I, I, amen. Praise the Lord. The Dallas Cowboys are playing today. Hallelujah. And I love watching the Dallas Cowboys. I was a Dallas Cowboys fan since diapers. I'm sorry, bro. Hallelujah. Amen. And diapers. And, yeah. Need to repent. Amen. But amen. And I, and, I, and I love watching the Dallas Cowboys. But guess what? I couldn't. I had to prepare for this message. Hallelujah. I stayed away from it. Hallelujah. Amen. I asked my boys what time do they play. But I ain't going to watch it. I said, are they playing or whatever? Amen. But I'm trying, I'm trying to not bring carnal something here. But I'm trying to tell you what's our priority. What's our priority? What God calls you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You got to shut off the TV. You got to shut off the entertainment. Hallelujah. Amen. I, amen. The social media, I'm just going to leave that alone. Are you, amen. I, praise God. Hallelujah. But I'm just trying to tell you what's our priority because there's distractions. There's portals in what we watch. You got to be careful. There's portals of the enemy that come through those distractions. Amen. Hallelujah. You got to be careful what you watch, youth. Youth. Amen. Hallelujah. You got to be careful what you watch. You got to be careful what you give yourself to. Amen. Hallelujah. What I'm trying to say is this. That strange woman added, saying with his words, taking him out of the will of God. Amen. Because when I'm in the will of God, I'm protected by his word. His word is what guards my heart. You look at these chapters, it says, bind the word. Amen. Around your heart. Amen. If I want a soul tie, I want a soul tie to God's word. I don't want a soul tie to the words of the strange woman. I don't want a soul tie. Amen. Praise God. Because what? Her ways go down to what? Hell. They take hold of hell. Okay. Amen. Now she, he says, hear me now, therefore, you little children. Depart not from the words of thy, my mouth. Remove the way far from her and come not nigh the door of her house. Don't even get close to it. Amen. Lest thou give thy honor unto others and thy years unto the cruel. There you go. There's the lost prodigal son there. Hallelujah. What happened? He, what? he gave his honor away. What was valuable? He gave it away to the strange woman. Hallelujah. And his years unto the cruel. Amen. Let strangers be filled with thy wealth. His wealth is gone. The strangers are God filled with it. And thy labors be in their house of a stranger. And thy labors be in the house of a stranger. Was he in the house of a stranger? Amen. In a pig pen. Hallelujah. Amen. And thou mourn the last when thy flesh and thy body are consumed. That's what happens. That's what happens to a man who, the one who doesn't see the value in what God has for them and what God has inside of them. Amen. This is what can happen if they don't repent. But look at the cry of this young man. He says, and say, how have I hated instruction? Didn't see it valuable. And my heart, it's a heart problem. Despised reproof. Didn't want correction. Didn't see the value of correction. Didn't see the value of it. Hallelujah. Young people, you need to see the value of correction. I need to see the value of correction. Even at a 46-year-old man, I need to see the value of correction. Hallelujah. Because I know when someone corrects me, they love me. Hallelujah. They're not trying to kill us. You're not, try, you're not trying to be, you're not getting get killed by correction. It's trying to put you on the right path. Hallelujah. But the flesh don't like it. Right? Because the flesh don't value the correction of a father, the correction or reproof. They despise him. He says, my heart despises him. He knew. He knew what he was doing. He distanced his heart. And had not obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor inclined my ear to them that instruct me. He didn't obey the voice. Pastor talked about it. He hardened. Hardened it, man. Hallelujah. To the soul, he, he, he couldn't penetrate no more. But look what happened. He got to the end of himself. But watch what he says here. It seems like a, a bit of hope here. 
He says, I was almost in all evil. In the midst of the congregation and assembly. Now, I, I don't know what that means. Hallelujah. I really don't. But I'm trying to tell you, this is the man. This young, this person here fell for the strange woman, the lips of the strange woman. Amen. And what happens is, see, what I'm trying to say is this, church. Hallelujah. See, good things can distract you from the will of God. It can take you off balance. Do you understand? It can take you off balance. Amen. I'm going to bring that, uh, that, that, that chart out again. Amen. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Here's the X and Y axis, right? Zero is the balance of everything there. Hallelujah. That's, where heart, that's, where God, that's the heart of God right there. Zero is the balance. Amen. Hallelujah. But when you add, see, when I add, see, you go, if you look at this X and Y axis, amen, to the left, it's negative. To the right, it's positive. See, when I add to the zero, hallelujah, there might be some good things I'm adding. Entertainment. Hallelujah. A bass fishing boat. Hallelujah. Something that could easily distract me and take me off balance because I don't know how to handle it. You understand? It could be good things. Things are not even sinful. Can take me off balance. I'm just going to let the Word of God. I'm not going to even add examples here. Amen. I'm just let the Word of God do what the Word of God does. Amen. Hallelujah. But then I can also add, amen, when the Word, when I take a word of a strange woman and I follow that Word, I'm adding something to me. Because if you, in case you don't know it, and you do know it, amen, you are a Word created. And when you add something that's not to God's Word, you're adding something to the Word of God. Amen. To the image of God. Amen. Hallelujah. And when you subtract and take away something, I'm not going to obey that. I'm going to pick and choose. I'm not going to obey the Father. I'm not going to obey His will. I'm subtracting. Therefore, I'm going away from zero again. Going to the left. Negative. Amen. How far will you go? You understand? Because it's infinite. It's infinite. To the left or to the right, it's infinite. It can take you off so much of balance. So much of balance to, your, to the right, you think you're right with God. But you don't know that you're, that you're, that you're lost. That you're, I have, amen, I have goods. Amen. And I'm in need of nothing. But you don't realize you're wretched. Amen. Hallelujah. And you're in need of a Savior. And then you're so negative. Amen. Hallelujah. You're subtracting. Hallelujah. The, the, you're not binding that word of God around your heart. Amen. Amen. There it is. And so where, and, I, and I'm going to end it with this. I'm going to end it with this. There's your X and Y axis. You're off balance. Amen. Where am I getting this at? Go to Revelation 22. Amen. Revelation 22. And I'll end it with this. Hallelujah. It says here in verse 18, For I testify unto every man that heareth these words of the prophecy of this book. If a man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away, there's math there, amen, from the words of this book, of this prophecy, God shall take away his part of the book of life. And out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Because when you add or take away, amen, hallelujah, this which is written in this book, you're off balance. And you don't know your value. And I'm going to say this, Pastor, and I'm going to close with this. I'm going back to the absolute value. Amen. Hallelujah. The absolute value is distance. Hallelujah. But it doesn't matter how far you go. Amen. God knows how to travel the distance if they repent. It doesn't matter how far you are on that X and Y off balance. God knows how to take the distance and make it a positive and absolute value because you're a valuable to him. And he'll go all the way and reach if we just repent. Amen. Hallelujah. So we know the need to know the value within. We need to know how God sees us. We need to know we need to value the things of God. Amen. And I am done, Pastor.